everything inside me. In the Hollywood blockbuster, Noah, the creator of this world, is portrayed as an evil homicidal maniac that utterly hates humanity. And the serpent is portrayed as the one holding the secret that will restore the divine spark to humanity. Unfortunately, most Christians, even those that have reviewed this film negatively, have totally missed the Luciferian Gnostic themes that are being openly promoted by this film. Director Darren Aronofsky has expertly woven elements of Luciferianism, Gnosticism, and even from the Kabbalah, throughout the film. Over the years, hundreds of millions of people all over the world that watch this movie will be exposed to the Luciferian gospel without even realizing it. There are many different strands of Gnosticism, but in the version that I call Luciferian Gnosticism, the creator of this world is an evil, being known as the Demiurge, and the serpent is a good being that possesses the secret knowledge, or Gnosis, that will help humanity rediscover the divine spark that already resides inside of them. The following is how Wikipedia describes how the Gnostics tend to view God. Gnosticism presents a distinction between the highest unknowable god and the demiurgic creator of the material. Several systems of Gnostic thought present the demiurge as antagonistic to the will of the supreme being. His act of creation occurs in unconscious semblance of the divine model and thus is fundamentally flawed or else is formed with the malevolent intention of entrapping aspects of the divine in materiality. Thus, in such systems, the demiurge acts as a solution to, or, at least possibly, the problem or cause that gives rise to the problem of evil. In the most radical form of Christian Gnosticism, the demiurge is the jealous god of the Old Testament. And this is precisely how the god of the Bible is portrayed in Noah as Dr. Brian Matson pointed out. Except that when Gnostics speak about the Creator, they are not talking about God. Oh, here, in an affluent world living off the fruits of Christendom, the term creator generally denotes the true and living God. But here's a little Gnosticism 101 for you. The creator of the material world is an ignorant, arrogant, jealous, exclusive, violent, low-level, bastard son of a low-level deity. He's responsible for creating the unspiritual world of flesh and matter, and he himself is so ignorant of the spiritual world, he fancies himself the only God, and demands absolute obedience. They generally call him Yahweh. Or other names too, Ildabaoth for example. This creator tries to keep Adam and Eve from the true knowledge of the divine, and, when they disobey, flies into a rage and boots them from the garden. In other words, in case you're losing the plot here, the serpent was right all along. This god, the creator, whom they are worshipping, is withholding something from them that the serpent will provide. Divinity itself. In Noah, essentially the creator is the bad guy, and the serpent is the good guy, just like in hardcore Gnosticism. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Another way that Gnosticism manifests itself in the film is, that Adam and Eve are portrayed as bright, shiny, luminescent beings, before the fall. It is only after the fall that they take on flesh and bone. This is also pure Gnosticism. In the 2nd century AD, Irenaeus of Lyon wrote the following regarding what one particular group of Gnostics believed. Adam and Eve formerly had light, luminous, and so to speak spiritual bodies, as they had been fashioned. But when they came here, the bodies became dark, fat, and idle. We can also find this doctrine in Kabbalism according to Dr. Matson. It occurred to me that a mystical tradition more closely related to Judaism, called Kabbalah, which the singer Madonna made popular a decade ago or so, surely would have held a similar view, since it is essentially a form of Jewish Gnosticism. I dusted off. No, really, I had to dust it. My copy of Adolf Frank's 19th century work, The Kabbalah, and quickly confirmed my suspicions. 
Before they were beguiled by the subtleness of the serpent, Adam and Eve were not only exempt from the need of a body, but did not even have a body, that is to say, they were not of the earth. And guess what? Dr. Matson also pointed out that Aronofsky's very first feature film was all about the Kabbalah. I discovered what Darren Aronofsky's first feature film was. Hi. Want to know its subject matter? Do you? Are you sure? Kabbalah. If you think that's a coincidence, you may want a loved one to schedule you a brain scan. Wow. When I first read that, I was absolutely stunned. A movie that is openly promoting Gnosticism and Kabbalism has been pawned off to Christians as a biblical movie, and millions of them are falling for it hook, line, and sinker. In Gnosticism, humanity has a dual nature. The physical part comes from the evil creator, but there is also a good part that comes from the true God. According to Gnostic belief, the evil creator is constantly trying to keep humanity from discovering the divine spark that supposedly resides within us all. The following is a brief summary of how the Gnostics view humanity. Human nature mirrors the duality found in the world. In part it was made by the false creator God, and in part it consists of the light of the true God. Humankind contains a perishable physical and psychic component, as well as a spiritual component which is a fragment of the divine essence. This latter part is often symbolically referred to as the divine spark. The recognition of this dual nature of the world and of the human being has earned the Gnostic tradition the epithet of dualist. Humans are generally ignorant of the divine spark resident within them. This ignorance is fostered in human nature by the influence of the false creator and his archons, who together are intent upon keeping men and women ignorant of their true nature and destiny. Anything that causes us to remain attached to earthly things, serves to keep us in enslavement to these lower cosmic rulers. Death releases the divine spark from its lowly prison, but if there has not been a substantial work of Gnosis undertaken by the soul prior to death, it becomes likely that the divine spark will be hurled back into, and then re-embodied within, the pangs and slavery of the physical world. Not all humans are spiritual, or pneumatics, and thus ready for Gnosis and liberation. Some are earthbound and materialistic beings, or hyletics, who recognize only the physical reality. Others live largely in their psyche, or psychics. Such people usually mistake the demiurge for the true God, and have little or no awareness of the spiritual world beyond matter and mind. In Gnosticism, secret knowledge, or Gnosis, is the key to liberation and enlightenment. And who provides that secret knowledge? It comes from the serpent. He was trying to provide that secret knowledge about the divine spark to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and he has supposedly been doing that ever since. In Noah, this secret knowledge is represented by the serpent skin that shows up throughout the film. In the movie, this serpent skin was supposedly shed by the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Here is another excerpt from Dr. Brian Matson's article. The action opens when Lamech is about to bless his son, Noah. Lamech, rather strangely for a patriarch of a family that follows God, takes out a sacred relic, the skin of the serpent from the Garden of Eden. He wraps it around his arm, stretches out his hand to touch his son, except, just then, a band of marauders interrupts them, and the ceremony isn't completed. Lamech gets killed, and the villain of the film, Tubal Cain, steals the snakeskin. Noah, in other words, doesn't get whatever benefit the serpent skin was to bestow. This movie is Luciferian to the core. It is just another step in the massive ongoing propaganda campaign to convince the world that the creator god of the Bible is evil and that Lucifer, the light bearer, is good and is trying to bring enlightenment to humanity. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.